For this tutorial, you will need your selected yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Special DK in hot pink and cream. I'll leave the link in the description box below for you. You will need your corresponding crochet hook. I'm using a four millimeter, but just check your yarn sleeve just to see uh, what that particular yarn recommends. You'll need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a stitch marker will come in handy, but it's not absolutely essential. To begin with, you want to start by creating your slip knot, and you can do this whichever method you prefer, and you want to insert your hook. Now, we're going to make our foundation chain, and this needs to be in multiples of three, and then we're going to add two to the end. So you would yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, that's three, four, five, six, and if you want to continue by making your chain, making sure that this chain isn't too tight, so don't hold on to your yarn too, uh, too tightly or pull on your hook too much. Um, so make your chain in multiples of three and meet me back once you've got to the length that you prefer. So I've just done a sample length and this is 18, so that's a multiple of three. And now I'm going to add an, uh, the extra two, so one and two. The reason why we add these extra two is they're classed as what we call our turning chains. So now we're going to work our way back along this chain length and we're going to start off by working into the fifth chain from the hook. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Just pinch that chain with your finger so you, can, um, so you remember which one it is. And we're going to do a treble crochet into this space. So this is a UK term. In the US, this is known as double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that fifth chain from the hook, grab the yarn and pull it through. You'll have three loops on the hook. Grab the yarn and pull through two loops, and then grab the yarn and pull through two loops. So here we have a treble crochet, and then we also have some chains here. That is also classing as a stitch. This row is really easy because all we're going to do is a treble crochet into every chain along that foundation chain. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, work your way along this chain and I'll meet you back in just a moment. So now that you've come to the end of your chain, what you should find is that the amount of chains you did for your original chain, so mine was 18 for example, I now have 17 stitches including this um, chain here from the very beginning. So you should always have one less stitch than your original chain number. What you're going to do now is you're going to pull out this yarn slightly and if you've got a stitch marker, you can pop one just in there. If you don't have a stitch marker, don't worry, just pull that thread out a little bit more just so you don't drop um, your stitch. And what you're going to do now is take your second colour and attach it into this very first space. So I'm just going to grab my colour now and then meet you back in a moment. So you can attach your colour in whichever method you prefer. I simply just tie mine on. Some people frown upon that but I just like it because I know that it's nice and secure. And um, if you're doing it in that way you just want to grab the yarn and pull it through and then we want to start off with a chain one and that's going to class as a double crochet which is known as single crochet in the US. We're now going to chain two, so one and two. We're going to skip three trebles, one, two, three, and in the space after the third treble, so just here, we're going to do a double crochet, so straight into the stitch, Grab the yarn and pull it through, you'll have two loops on the hook. Grab the yarn and pull through both loops on the hook. Remember that's no, known as single crochet in the US. We're then going to repeat that, so chain two. Skip three trebles and then do a double crochet 
into the space after that third treble, like so. And you're going to do that all the way along. So if you want to pause the video and work your way right to the end and meet me back in just a moment. So what you should find at the end of that row is that you do your last stitch into the very last space just here and then you're going to tie off your yarn. So the way that I like to do this is um, chain one, snip off with the scissors and then pull through and that just tightens that off. We're now going to go ahead and pick up this stitch here. So if you want to insert your hook into that um, loop, take off your stitch marker if you've got a stitch marker in there and then we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and then turn the work. You can just pop that loose thread out the way there. This chain three is going to act as a treble and then what we're going to do is work straight under that chain two, so in that chain two space just here. And we're going to do three trebles in there. So this is just like you would do um, with a granny stripe or a granny square, so grouping three trebles together. So that's two and three. You're not going to chain any, you're just going to go straight into that next chain two space and do another three trebles. So a really nice easy row. If you want to work your way until you get to the last chain space, meet me back and I'll show you what to do from there. So this is what your work should be looking like now. We've worked our way to the end space and now what we're going to do to secure this row is actually do a treble into the top of this chain just here. So you're counting one, two, three. Um, you can either do it in the third or the fourth chain, it's totally up to you. But you want to um, secure um, that row down by doing a treble into the chain from the very first row of trebles that you did. At this point, you want to pull out your yarn and grab your stitch marker again or just leave that loose depending on if you've got a stitch marker and then we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to attach this yarn here and do exactly the same as what we've done from the row before so if you want to rewind the video and just follow the same instructions and continue by building your work in that way. I'm going to add a few more rows so that you can see what it starts to work out like. So this is what it looks like with a few more rows added and of course you can do whichever colourways you like. I quite often think that a blanket with um, these colours changing throughout would look really really pretty. I've sewn in most of my ends so I just thought I'd um, show you which way I tend to sew my ends just so you don't see any of the colours. So this is the brighter colour here and if you just think about where the chains are along this area here I simply just pop my darning needle through a few of the um, spaces, pull it through, you can obviously pull through as much as you want but this is just a sample piece so I won't go too far um, and then cut off the end and that's what it looks like. So obviously it looks the same from the front to the back. Um, this is actually really nice to do as a whole blanket or you could put it around um, to finish off a blanket as almost like a, an extra bit of border. But I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to keep up to date with any of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.